Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. We're shooting today in Italy, in Fiesole, a town in the hills just above Florence. An academic and author, David Berlinski is a senior fellow at the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture and a contributing editor at Inference, International Review of Science. Dr. Berlinski holds a doctorate in philosophy from Princeton, performed postdoctoral work in molecular biology at Columbia, and has taught philosophy, mathematics, and English at institutions such as Stanford, Rutgers, and the City University of New York, and the Université de Paris. His books include The Devil's Delusion, Atheism and Its Scientific Pretensions, and The Deniable Darwin and Other Essays. David Berlinski, welcome. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I have to speak for just a moment about David Galerter, the Yale computer scientist who just this past spring published an essay in the Claremont Review of Books called Giving Up Darwin. Quotation, there's no reason to doubt that Darwin successfully explained the small adjustments by which an organism adapts to local circumstances, changes to fur density or wing style or beak shape. Yet, there are many reasons to doubt whether he can explain the big picture, not the fine tuning of species, but the emergence of new ones. The origin of species is exactly what Darwin cannot explain, close quote. Now, David Galerter is a leading computer scientist, and computer science is at the very center of everything that's cool about the new economy, about the current academia. It's technocratic, it's rational. You don't have to ask ultimate questions. And here's Galerter going over to the kooky side. And why does he do this? In part by reading the work of David Berlinski, which David Galerner, in his essay, referred to as, quote, essential. So take me through a few of your arguments from the deniable Darwin, bearing in mind that you have a lot to answer for. A lot to answer for. Look, since Darwin published in 1859, everyone has pretty much recognized what the problem is. The problem is at the end of the inference, we have something we cannot properly describe, a living system. How on earth are we to place our confidence in a process of evolution if we can't characterize what it reaches? That's an essential problem, not only for a dynamic theory of life, but any learning theory, for example. If you can't characterize what an organism has learned, you don't know how to evaluate a learning theory. By the same token, what we do know of living systems is uh, a degree of complexity that's almost unfathomable. This complexity wrapped up in complexity, wrapped up in complexity, forming an endless panorama of la labyrinths. And we simply have no way of reconciling the kind of primitive mechanism we see in local variation, random mutation, and natural Which Darwin selection. did describe correctly. Which he he described was on to something there. He was sort of something. He had a local okay. theory of change. Right. But he had nothing like a global theory. And this is what we're lacking. All right. Let me ask you, if I may, David. I've made notes. I read sure. that master essay, The Deniable Darwin. And I just made notes. I'm a layman. You're a scientist. I'm going to ask you to make me understand the fossil record. This is you writing in the deniable Darwin. Quote, if life progressed by an accumulation of small changes, as Darwin suggests, the fossil record should reflect this. Little organisms, slightly more complicated, slightly more complicated than that, in a, in a smooth progression to, to David Berlinski and me, say, or at least to dinosaurs. But before the Cambrian era, a brief 600 million years ago, very little is inscribed in the fossil record. And then, during the so-called Cambrian explosion, an astonishing number of biological structures come into creation all at once. The Cambrian era, as I recall, lasted 70 million years. Some uncertainty about the time. It could be more, it could be less. But the argument is that in geologic time, it's a blink that's, of, that's blink the of blink an of an eye. eye. A blink of an eye. And that's, that's not only a problem for Darwin, that's in and of itself 
fatal? How, how it's not fatal. There are a variety of explanations in the literature. I mean, some, some paleontologists argue that the record is there. It's just not very evident. Others argue that there was a large-scale radiation, and uh, much of the details are now lost, but there's no reason mm -hmm. to doubt that that occurred. But the essential part is, look, you've got a theory that makes at least one qualitative prediction. That is, change in biology is continuous. It's not radical. It's not discontinuous. It doesn't jump. And if you look at the historical record, it seems to jump all over the place, especially at the Cambrian. Now, whether there are explanations, whether that can be reconciled, the historical record is an open question. But for heaven's sake, let's begin with the obvious. There's something not right in the theory. It makes a qualitative prediction on the one hand, and the facts are recalcitrant on the other. Maybe you can reconcile the two. I don't have an opinion. I'm not a paleontologist. But the least that we should be doing is saying clearly, look, something's not right. Something isn't right. And it's not only the Cambrian explosion. Look at us sitting around the room doing something that no other organism can do, chatting with one another. Now, what is, it, what is the explanation for a whole suite of human powers and capacities, language foremost among them. Now, the usual Darwinian explanation, the usual explanation of common sense is, look, it's tremendously useful. Right, right. Tremend right. OK, if it's so useful, why is it so isolated? No other organism can speak. Try talking to the dog. See how far it gets you. They have nothing to say, nor do the cats. Perhaps that's, that's incorrect. They don't wish to say anything. <laughs> the cats don't deign to speak to us. Yeah. Right? But uh, that's a typical example. We have a, a property that's absolutely self-evident, the power to assimilate a natural language. No other organism has that power. We don't know why we're the only species so gifted.